Okay, in this video, what we're going to do is we are going to create a settings screen. And so what I did is I created uh, using a drawing program some buttons, one for play, one for settings, and one for about. When I made the sprites for those buttons, I'll show you what I did. Let me just uh, show you the uh, play button. So here's the play button. And what I did is I made the play button in state zero, and then I made a play button in state one that was a copy of it, but I changed the color of the text and I put a little check mark on it, just so when I mouse over it, it'll be highlighted. I'll show you what the uh, uh, play button or the options button uh, looks like. So what I do is, in the button for settings, I called it options. Uh, I should have probably called it object settings. But I said when it's created, use the sprite for the options. When I press the left button, what I did is I said go to room. And go to room is this one right here. Um, and this is uh, choosing a different room. And so you could choose the start room, the instructions room, the about room, or the settings room. And so you'll see what I did is I chose settings. Let me just uh, remove that and show you here. So it says go to settings. So when you press the left button, uh, go to settings. When you enter, we're gonna change the sprite to be the one that's green. And when you go leave, we're gonna change the sprite to the one here that is not green. So when I press uh, create, it makes the one that is uh, not highlighted. When I press leave, it's gonna be that same one that's not highlighted. But when I press enter, it's gonna be the green one with the check mark. Okay, and so when I click uh, with the mouse left press, so when I press the left mouse button, it's gonna go to the room here called settings. So I did that for the settings. I did it for about, and I did it for play. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make an object here called settings. And I want the settings to be consistent everywhere in the game. And so because I want that object to exist in all of the rooms, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it in the start room and I'm gonna put a check mark right here where it says persistent. That way, when it goes to room two or room game over or room instructions or room settings or room about, it will still be active. So I create this object called settings and I'm gonna put that object called settings in this very first room here this, uh, that has the option to play settings and about. So I'm gonna stick settings right here. So let's again go through object settings and uh, see what we're gonna do here. So object settings is gonna keep the settings of the game. It's gonna keep how many lives we have, how fast we shoot, it might even have something to do with how fast I move left and right and up and down. Um, so to do that, I'm gonna have an event called create and I'm gonna create some variables. So I'm gonna make a variable called maybe num of lives. So settings is gonna have the number of lives and let's say I want the number of lives to be three. I might make another variable called shoot delay, and that's going to be how rapid fire it's going to shoot. And so uh, by standard, it's I'll put 15 and uh, fast might be 30, uh, oh, sorry, five and the delay for slow might be 30. Uh, maybe I'll do something for um, uh, move speed and I might set it to a value of one or two or, so one might be normal, 0.5 might be slow and two might be uh, double speed. Okay, so those are some variables. Because the variables are in this object that is persistent, I can get them anywhere. And let me show you that by going to the game. So in the game, we have an object of a game controller. And the game controller, as you might remember, 
um, is going to draw the scoreboard at the bottom and it's also going to keep track of things. So if I go to my game controller, let me just go to the game controller and object game controller, wherever it is, uh, we're going to set when it's created, instead of setting uh, the lives to three, we're going to say, aha, let's put it to the value of a variable, number of lives. But it's not just the value of a variable number of lives, it's number of lives does not exist in the game controller. The number of lives exists in an object. So to get access to this variable, I need to go settings, that's the object. Then I place a dot, you see the dot right there and then the name of the variable, number of lives. So if I set the number of lives to three, it's gonna be three. Let me show you how I could change the um, plane's uh, left and right movement, uh, all the movement to be faster. As you may remember, in the settings, I created a variable called move speed. And so if I wanna access the move speed, so when I press, uh, let's say the left, Instead of jumping uh, minus four, I might jump minus four multiplied by the settings move underscore speed. And so if I have the speed set at two, it would move minus four times two, which would be minus eight. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna multiply all my movements. So when I do right, I'm going to say, Let's multiply the right, which is a speed of positive four relative times the setting move speed. And then if I do up and down, uh, same thing. I'm gonna move up and I'm gonna jump uh, on relative on the Y axis, minus four times the setting move speed. And for down, I might, oops, I might jump down four times the setting move speed. So that's how I could make the move speed. So how do I adjust those things? Well, let's go back to uh, the original thing and I've created a room called settings. So in the room called settings, I use those same, um, let's take a look at it. You'll see the same buttons, play settings and about, but this time, um, and so they'll go to the play, will go to the game, settings will go to this room, about will go to a room that talks about the game. But I'm gonna do something for minus and plus for the number of lives. So if I click plus on the number of lives, so what I did, I just created a little object here. And for plus for the number of lives, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna add an event and I'm gonna say when I press uh, with a mouse left pressed button, what I want to do is I want to adjust a variable. I, the variable is, um, we're going to add a number of lives, so the variable is called number uh, of lives. And we're going to say we're going to add one relative. But it, number of lives doesn't exist here. Remember, the number of lives is part of the settings object. So to access this variable number of lives right here, what I have to do is say uh, settings object settings and then dot and then the name of the variable. So the variable is called number of lives. So this would let me add one life to the game. But what I really should do is have a limit. I don't want to have the ability to make 100 lives. That would make the game a little too easy. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna test a variable. And the variable I'm gonna test is that variable, oops, uh, number of lives. But it's not, again, it doesn't exist. So I have to go settings dot. So the settings number of lives, as long as it's smaller than, let's say 10, if, that, if the settings number of lives is less than 10, then we'll make it uh, add one more life. 
Let's do the minus button here. So object minus lives. What I'm going to do for minus lives is very similar. When I press the left button, I'm going to go to a variable and I'm going to say the variable settings dot number of lives is going to be minus one relative. Again, the game would be stupid if you had zero lives and you went to press play because you'd have no lives and the game would be over. So to fix that and make sure that we can't subtract uh, one life relative when we uh, get to uh, zero, we're going to test a variable called number of lives, which is part of settings. So I go settings dot number of lives and I will subtract one. Uh, oh, sorry, I'm going to say it's uh, larger than zero. So if you have uh, or actually larger than uh, one. So if you have more than one life, you can get rid of one. Uh, but if you only have one life, I want to make one the minimum. So if the settings number of lives is larger than one, then we can remove one. Great. Now the last thing I want to do is I create a little display here to display the, uh, the number of lives. And let me just show you that right here. Uh, I draw the variable um, settings dot number of lives and I say draw it at 220, 205. And I just played around with those values till it fit uh, right here. Let me hit play. Hopefully I haven't made any mistakes. And what we shall see is I've got this um, persistent object called settings that contains the values of some variables. And then I made a special room for the settings to display what the variable is. So in this case, I've got lives being a value of three. And if I want to increase the number of lives to four, five, uh, all the way up to 10, I can just keep pressing. But once I hit 10, I can't make any more. And let me just show you that I can crank the lives down to one and it's going to display just one life. And so now when I press play, you'll see in the scoreboard, I only have one life. And so you'll see, uh, the game's going to be over. Let me just make the game over pretty quick. There you go. I only had one life. But if I want to go back and I want to make the settings and I want to set the lives to three, now when I uh, press play, the lives are going to be three. And you can see I've got uh, plenty of lives, uh, three that I am not. Um, there you go. I lost a life. Now I'm down to two lives and so forth. Okay. Uh, the next thing I did is I did a delay uh, for a delay timer and for the delay timer what I'm going to do is in object my plane when I hit the space bar um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the alarm to a variable called settings dot shoot delay. And so if the shoot delay is bigger or smaller uh, the alarm will go faster or uh, slower and so the faster the alarm goes the quicker my sh shots will go and you can come up with all sorts of different settings that you're going to add here and you design the graphics and the display.